Continuing coverage this afternoon of the news that is breaking that North Korea has miniaturized nuclear capability to fit it onto a warhead and fire it. General Jack Keane is a retired four-star general, chairman of the Institute for the Study of War, and a Fox News military analyst, someone that we depend on heavily during these times. General, this is disturbing news. It is an important story anyway, but now uh, taken so much farther, considering that North Korea has just said that its nuclear program is not negotiable. Yeah, I mean, we, we knew this news was coming, certainly, because uh, North Korea has done everything they said they were going to do. Um, develop ballistic missile capability, medium range, develop submarine ballistic missile capability, develop long range ballistic missile capability, and finally develop intercontinental ballistic missile. They've done all of that. And they've done it at a remarkable speed. And most of those missiles, Harris, and we've got to keep going back to this, look remarkably like the Chinese. I believe they're absolutely complicit in, in uh, North Korea's missile development. And they said they were going to develop a miniaturized nuclear weapon capable of affixing it to an intercontinental ballistic missile. It appears that they have developed such a device, if we're going to believe the Washington Post, I, I think it's probably credible, uh, given the confirmation that they've had. But also our administration is very much aware of all of what we're talking about here today, and obviously that was on the table when they went into negotiations with the Russians and the Chinese over this um, uh, recent sanction policy that they got out of the, out of the UN. So. Our administration, our leaders here are clear-eyed about what is happening because they've been privy to this information for some time. I want to read something to you, General, given all that you've just laid out there and what we've known. Uh, the Weekly Standard put out an op-ed, and it says, at this point, the United States has no options that don't involve the risk of war. There's an argument to be made for preemptively striking North Korean mi missile launch sites, but preemptive strikes, barring a coup and the implosion of the Kim regime, would provoke a war. The U.S. military could shoot down a North Korean test missile. There are risks, but the potential advantages are considerable. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I, absolutely. Those, those options are clearly on the table, beginning with something more benign like shooting down a, a, a test vehicle as opposed to taking out actual facilities themselves. Mm -hmm. Remember what's happening here. Kim Jong-un has departed from his father and grandfather and said, it's no longer my objective to prevent regime change by pointing nuclear weapons at South Korea. He said he doesn't think that holds the United States from regime change. It's foolishness, but that's his belief. He believes he has to put the American people at risk. He also believes this, Harris. He's absolutely convinced that the United States will acquiesce and accept his nuclearized ICBMs just as we accepted him having nuclear weapons, just as we accepted China having nuclearized ICBMs. Mm. That's what he sees, and that's what he believes is going to happen eventually. His miscalculation is, in my judgment, that was likely true with the appeasement and accommodations that President Obama did with the Far East, with the Middle East, and with the Russians. This is a different administration, and I don't believe for a minute that President Trump is going to accept a nuclearized ICBM capable of destroying the, Amer the American people. I, I don't see that kind of accommodation being made, and it's got to factor in the Kim Jong-un's calculation sure. here, and the one that's going to help him think through this has got to be China. All right, so stop right there, because I want to come back with what you said before that was so troubling. You said that you saw the markings, if you will, of, of just the Chinese maybe involvement in where North Korea is with its nukes capability. How can the two, isn't the, wouldn't that be mutually exclusive that you would anticipate that you'd see some sort of fingerprints, if you will, and then also almost desperately need them to get in to keep this from escalating? Well, I think the Chinese, particularly on the this more aggressive Premier Xi, uh, during the eight years of the Obama administration, made a calculation that he can revise the regional order mm -hmm. in the Western Pacific, in the South China Sea and the East China Sea, that China will begin to dominate. And they've been doing that during that time frame, that we can nuclearize an ICBM North Korea to, to the point where it's going to push back the United States, not make the United States more aggressive. I mean, that is the calculation, I think, that's been going on. However, 
we have a different president and a different administration who takes a different view. And I think North Korea and China are both making the adjustment to that. China admitting to these sanctions. Now, these sanctions are more comprehensive than the seven that have failed before. But at the same time, it's not going to seriously impact North Korea, where it would put their, their economy at risk because their clothing and textile industry is not touched. And even their labor force that's out there where they make millions and millions of dollars, where they're hired by the Chinese and the Russians, we're not cutting back on it. We're just not in increasing it. So I think there's more to be done here, particularly with China. And China, listen, the Trump administration is, is making a major effort, certainly to work with China to avoid having to do the options that you mentioned that are in the weekly standard. They certainly are aware of those, sure. but the risks associated with them are significant.